Okay, a little bit of context for the video. As the title says, I'm going to be showing you how to use your AI squad mates effectively, showing you how to uh, maintain local control over the area. Obviously, there's only five of you, so you're not going to outnumber anybody. You know, using the AI commands, the AI commands are incredibly awesome in the 1.0 update. Uh, the things you can do with them is insane. This video is going to show you, and this can transfer to any mission. Obviously, every scenario is different. You may learn a couple things, and when I'm doing things, I'm going to explain why I'm doing them, and that is going to give you a pretty basic idea, uh, you know, that you can work on to make your runs a little bit easier. Uh, down below, there's going to be timestamps. If you feel like skipping ahead right to the main mission, check down below, skip ahead. If not, I'm going to spend a few minutes and talk about my loadout and what I'm bringing in and why. Enjoy the video. We're going to be responding to a 911 call. Michael Williams reportedly has killed his mother and has taken his younger brother hostage. Damn, he's shorter than his mom. 195? Yeah, okay. I don't believe that. All right, so going into the loadouts, as I said, I'm showing you why I'm bringing what I'm bringing in and what I'm bringing in. Obviously, this is personal preference. If you can learn something from this, then more power to you. Starting off, I'm going to go top to bottom. I'm not going to run through everybody, but the ones that stand out, I am going to go into a little bit. So it'll be a couple minutes. So bear with me. Uh... Apartment complex. I know I'm going into an apartment complex. Probably going to be a lot of rooms, enclosed spaces, tight spaces. So I'm going with the shortest uh, rifle. I run uh, the Elvar, typically, depending. It's internally suppressed, and when we're in enclosed areas like this, I want to be entirely suppressed. Yes, does it help for uh, keeping our noise down to enemies, but it also keeps, you know, you can hear more what's going on when you're suppressed. Obviously, it ain't a big difference because you're still firing a suppressed weapon it's still going to be loud but it's a lot better listening to that than listening to unsuppressed weapons going off next to your face that's why i run it uh, that's my line of thinking i know it's just a game but anyway i'm running the elvar attachments those are personal preference lights i like lights better even when i'm you know point shooting i still like to have a light because i like to be able to turn it on and off for dark rooms uh sidearm doesn't matter moving on to the armor uh i run heavy armor on all my guys every single one i have it Worked out pretty well with my deplo uh, deployables. Unless I see a reason, if I'm having a hard time, I will run lighter armor if I need more deployable uh, munitions. But I have it pretty well figured out with what I'm running and what I need, how to fit everything. So heavy armor on all my guys because the AI is cracked in this game. And I want me and my guys to be able to take rounds. Uh, I run ceramic, obviously, because it kind of it's the best of both worlds. I don't run steel or Kevlar. Going down to the slots. Personal preference for running AP and uh, hollow points. I run AP all my guys because it's got better penetration. So I like to be able to shoot through doors because a lot of this is shooting through doors and walls and anything else. And it's worked for me so far. I haven't had an issue. Again, personal preference. Sometimes I breach myself. So I do bring a couple flashbangs for myself. I use wedges extensively. So every one of my teammates carries a wedge. I carry a lock pick and I uh, have a non-lethal taser. Because you never know when you're going to need it. It's always nice to have one. I don't want to rely on my teammates to deploy the non-lethals, so I'll take it myself. And uh, for this mission, usually I don't typically run the mirror gun. I go without it. Uh, maybe I'll have one of my teammates to use it, just in case. Kind of makes the game a lot easier. It depends on how much you want to challenge yourself. But for this, since this is a teaching mission, I'm trying to give you tips on this. I'm going to bring it, so that way it helps me explain what I'm doing more and whatnot. So, each team, so you have red team and you have blue team. Red team, you're going to notice they both have beige colored plate carriers, and these guys have black. So I like to be able to tell quickly the difference between which team is which. Uh, you can set it to whatever you want to set up, clothing-wise or whatnot, if there's a way you can remember who's who. I like to be able to know, I like to be able to look at guys and say, that's red team. If they're closest to me, I can select them and use them. That way I'm not, you know, if I have blue team covering a door and I want red team to come and help me breach a door, I'm not pulling the wrong team and potentially causing uh, fatalities. Again, I'm not going to go into every squad mate, but most of them, this guy is my dedicated flashbanger. Like I said, everybody's going to have a wedge. This guy's got the most flashbangs. And again, I don't run very much. Oh, I actually have a slot. Um, I'm going to give him another. I like to give five. AI likes to shoot, so I want I do not want them to run out of ammo. So uh, this guy is pretty basic. He just carries flashbangs, one stinger, just in case. I don't typically use stingers. 
I don't I don't find them very effective. I find the flashbangs way more effective. Each team has a shield. Every guy carries a wedge. Each team has a lock pick. Uh, every guy has at least one flashbang. The only time, and this is going to notice this is different, the only time I give my guys more handgun ammunition is when they are carrying the shield. Now we're on the blue team. I'm testing this out. I usually give him a actual firearm, but this one I'm going non-lethal because he is carrying the shield, so he's not going to be using his primary weapon as much. Uh, each team has C2 available, each team has wedges, and each team is going to have a lockpick. So I'm giving him more handgun ammunition because he's using the shield, so he's going to be going through handgun ammo much more than the other guys. You know, again, going back to why I'm carrying the internally suppressed Elvar, when you put a suppressor on the other guns, it extends out so far, and you clip on your doorways and you go through them. So the shorter weapon you have, the better it's going to be, because you're going to be able to get your gun down and get on target way faster than if you have a longer rifle. Like I said, each each team has a lockpick. Every guy has at least one flashbang. Each team has C2. Every one of my teammates has a wedge, including myself, because I use wedges constantly. If you're not using wedges, obviously there's way more than one way to play this game, but I feel like wedges are like a very important thing, and you should always have them. And I'm going to show you why when I get to the mission here in a little bit. Like I said before, I have guys with different colored plate carriers that's red team so now i know that's red team that's blue team obviously gold team is the entire team so uh, as we're coming up the stairs i can already see i have a open uh entrance into the apartment complex that's open and it's dark and my flashlight does not reach that far so i'm going to maintain most of my uh my focus on there as i'm coming up but i'm also clearing what's around me because you never know in this game these guys come from anywhere at and you don't get second chances in this. If you walk into a room and you don't see a guy, he will kill you. So, just gotta watch out for that. Uh, upon first uh, initial uh, observations here, it looks like we have one entrance, but we also have this side entrance. So this one, unlike other maps, you know, it's very limited on the on the outside access. But I'm gonna go through this, like I said before, and I'm gonna show you how to maintain local control. Uh, I'm assuming that there's going to be a, a, you know, a vast amount of guys in here, whether it's suspects or just civilians. So we're outnumbered. We're always outnumbered. But you can maintain local control, and you can get you you can bring in the uh, the amount of people that are going to be able to attack you. You can bring that number down by clearing things slowly, doing things the right way. You can play this game however you want, but if you play it slow, the majority of the times you're going to make it out alive, and you're going to have a pretty good score. So, we're not going to go into this atrium because it's a big, and it looks like it opens up into a big room. I do not want to, if I don't have to, I'm not going to uh, try and clear that. So we are going to take the side entrance. Door is open, so I'm already kind of uh, clearing. Again, always clearing. Try and get into a habit of checking for traps, even though I don't think, in 1.0 I haven't seen these gate doors, or like fence doors or whatnot, with traps. But, I kind of just get into a habit of checking all doors for traps. Another thing you're going to want to do is I'm clearing this. So obviously if this was a little darker, it's not that big of a deal, but I have my, my accessory, which is your flashlight or your, your laser. I have that bound to one of my mouse buttons so I can click it on and off. And I also have my point aim and my ADS button bound to something that you can easily access is what I uh, suggest. Because, you know, you can go like this most of the time, but I like to have it like that. My, my I like to be point aiming because it gives me more, uh, it's less uh, obstructions of what I can see. And if, you know, if I see a guy, it's like, okay, I can boom. I can pull my gun up. We're going to go nice and slow. We're not going to rush things. So, now you could clear this yourself, or since there's two ways, you can't really clear two ways at the same time, so you can hit your middle mouse button. You can have your AI team come up here, and they are going to walk up there, and they're going to clear that for you. So now I know up to here, we're good. I'm going to come to these stairs. I'm going to just clear the immediate area. See what I mean? Okay, we got open door. Okay, now I gotta heal. See what I mean? Anything can happen at any time. We're still alive. We got all four guys up. We got two two guys down. So I'm gonna have uh, blue team. Actually, I'm gonna have. Yeah, blue team, because red team right now is watching that door. That's red team. He's watching that door right now. I'm going to have blue, blue team come over here. Move to my front. Oh, ready. I accidentally. Red, team provide cover. Got a suspect down. red team's going to stay, so now I'm watching that door. Uh, this isn't exactly how I wanted to do this, but... So even though we have some suspects down, I am going to shut this door. 
And we're going to wedge this. Uh, Jam the door. Six. I'll block. Now that we're all set, I'm going to have Gold Team fall back in on me. On me. Move. I got you. The nice part is the AI will actually take care of these guys now. They'll call them in, they'll report them, and they'll cuff them up, and they'll secure their evidence, their weapon. And again, you notice how I didn't go down there and I didn't focus on that door. I cleared the immediate... Because if I would have focused on that door, that guy would have walked right down the stairs and potentially shot one of my guys in the back. Or potentially even gotten a shootout with them and killed them. So, you know, I'm trying not to overextend what I clear, but I'm also not trying to bypass a lot. I don't want to approach that door and expose myself. But what I can do is have my AI stack up and you can uh, tell them to split left uh, you can tell them to split right to split the door completely to on each side well to keep them out of danger i'm gonna have Close them split the right. right moving into place i'm gonna shut it oh and they shut the door for me oh nice so now i uh, now i can actually observe that i have an open door across the way so that's i'm gonna watch that for my team i'm gonna let these guys do the work and i'm gonna watch that for their team and so, actually, what we're going to do for teaching purposes is I'm going to observe this room. Not a whole lot going on. So I don't know if there's people in there or not. I don't know if they're unarmed. I don't know anything. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have them open it and just clear with a flashbang. Because there may or may not be people in there. Uh, so I still want to flashbang it before I clear it. I'm still maintaining security on this door. Let them do the work. Looks clear over here, boss. Looks clear over here, boss. Okay, so now we're coming in. We're clear. So now I got two. I got, I got two doors here. This looks like it stays in the room. That looks like potentially an exterior door. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have them wedge that door. Jam that door. Wedge maintaining local control. There's at max a couple guys in this next room. But if you leave this open, you have the entire the entire apartment complex that can come in on you and can collapse on you. So maintaining local control. I'm wedging that door. Now I'm approaching this door. I'm going to have, so uh, we have red team watching that door. So blue team is going to come with me. Provide We're going to stack up. I'm on it. Notice I'm covering them stacking up on the door. The nice part about the AI is they're going to check that door and they're going to let you know if it's locked or not. Looks like we have one civilian and another thing too is I, you never want to come up to a door and just check it because i can't tell you the number of times i've i've come up on a door without having my teammates stack on it or cover me and i, I peek in here and all of a sudden a guy's coming out the door he opens the door and he kills you so i observe no uh arm suspects i got one civilian this looks like the guy's mom judging from the pictures earlier so we want to take her alive so We're going to go in. I'm actually going to show you that you can uh, have these guys open and clear off of you instead of oh, having I them do most of the work. Police, don't move. Move it, go. Police, get down. Get down. Get down. Get down. I have to cuff you for our safety. Okay. Successful room uh, entry. High ground to talk. No, yeah, she's good. Uh, obviously, so when you you notice that that guy brought his shield out when he was gonna come in here, which is super cool. You don't have to constantly tell them. I'm just clearing this just because. Okay, so now we can work our way back downstairs to that last room that we, uh, the last room that we wedged off, and now though this exterior door that led into here. This is an exterior room that you can access from the fire escape. This is clear. I know that's closed, so nobody can come through here. So nobody is going to be coming from above me, and hopefully nobody comes from below you. Now, the, the front entrance, that atrium down there, you can't close that off. It is what it is. I'm just going to go with the assumption that hopefully nobody comes out of there. But anyway. Provide support on me. I'm going to have gold team fall in on me. Actually, I'm going to have them fall in and go on single file. Again, even though I've already been down here, I'm still clearing this like there's potentially a threat that's going to be in front of me. Because you never know. You never know in this game. Guys can come from anywhere. They can be just waiting for you. 
That door is wedged, as you can see. I'm still clearing these stairs. Okay. So, you can come in here and you can see that you this is coming into the kitchen. And we have, you know, looks like a hallway of some sorts that opens up. You can't really tell what's going on. Unfortunately, uh, you know, even if you do flash, there's a good chance that this isn't going to affect anybody. But we're still going to open and flash it. Always open and flash it. Especially when you can't see. Uh, for sure. So, anyway... We're gonna have these guys stack up and since this is such a big room and such a uh you know hard thing like i said this game is incredibly difficult to do on your own so i'm gonna rely a little bit more on them right now i'm gonna have them stack up and another mirror thing it. And mirror it. no don't pull mirror it on you. i'm gonna pull my mirror back out here if i can my god okay so now when we're looking at this okay so obviously there's no threats to the left but there's potentially a threat to the right so when they open, so when I have them stack on this door, I'm going to have them stack right to the right. Because that gives them less of a chance of getting shot from that side when that door opens. So when I breach this, I don't want to be standing here because that's right where the threat's going to be. What you want to do is you either want to stand in the back or you can, if you can, get somewhere where you, you know, there, it's limited uh, visibility on you. I'm going to equip the multi-tool and we're going to take this out. So we're gonna open, and we're gonna clear with uh, a flashbang. Open and flashbang. Copy with me. Flash Walk out. With me. Shields go first. Shield guys go first, which is super cool. Letting my guys clear right, and now I'm, I'm maintaining my focus on what is the biggest threat to me, which is open doors. My guys are clearing behind me, and they're clearing to the left, so I'm not worried about that. We're gonna take care of you. I think the kids run some kind of civilian. Okay, so issue. This front door is open. The least, most likely that we're gonna be uh, attacked from is this door. I'm gonna shut it, and I'm gonna have somebody wedge it. Jam. Wedge ready. I'm gonna cover my guy while he's doing this, just in case. But now, wedge ready. once he's done. Now nobody's coming through that door. Nobody's going to be hopefully coming from behind us because we wedged upstairs. Uh, hopefully nobody's coming from down below. If you want, you could wedge this just to maintain a little bit more security. But I'm going to have blue team. Blue team. Actually, no, oh. I'm going to have red team because blue team right now is close to that door, so he's going to be covering that. So I'm going to take red, and I'm just going to have them move over here, and they're going to cover that rear entrance. Your guys have already cuffed up these guys. They've already reported them. Uh, generally, if I'm clearing a room, I'm not looking for evidence or anything. I'm just securing suspects and whatnot before I do anything. These guys are covering down here, so we're good here. Okay, so we have one door left. And blue team is on it right now. So I'm going to have them stack up. You're in my way, sir. We're good to go. Now they're stacked up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wand it. Again, for training purposes. Again, another thing too, when you are wanding, it is a good idea to check for traps. You'll see them on the sides of the door here. Generally, you're going to be on this side. There's going to be a grenade of some kind there. Anyway, um, we're going to proceed. I don't see anybody, so I am going to just peek it. No trap. I'm going to open it, and I'm just going to clear it. Just to verify that nobody's there. Okay, so now that the room is entirely clear... Police, hands up! I'm going to... Try and report. I think I reported it. I don't know. So now that everything's done, I can come through and I can start looking for evidence to secure. But I am not looking for evidence until I've cleared this entire, you know, this entire room. When your when your local area is under control, then you can start looking for evidence. You shouldn't be doing it beforehand. You know, if you want to cuff up suspects, that you should be because a lot of times these guys will pick up the guns that they dropped. But don't focus on it too much if there's another threat that's right in front of you. Okay. So, now that this is done, this room is secure. Nobody's getting in here, so I don't have to worry about wedging this door. So I'm going to have everybody fall back in on me. Stay on me. Behind you. And we're going to move back up top. We're going to clear our way through as well, still. 
Uh, we should be good up to here because I wedged this door so nobody's coming through. So this is the top floor. This is as high as you can go. All right, so I want to clear either bottom up or top down. I never want to be in the middle because we come out here and we look. Look at that. We got a guy right here. That's why I wedged this door. This guy could have came in here. What not? Who knows? We have this big opening out here. I don't know what's to the right. That guy just went to the right, so I know he's there. But uh, what I don't want to do, and so now I, I can obviously, if I work down, there's nobody that's going to be behind me. Everybody's going to be, you know, in front of me. I don't have to worry about looking up. I don't have to worry about looking down. I can just worry about looking down and clearing this room. Uh, okay, so I'm going to have these guys stack up. So again, Check for targets. stop. Again, close left is closed off. There's nobody there, but our, you know, the threat is going to be to the right. So what we're going to do is I'm going to have these guys stack up. Cover the area. No problem. Cover this area. I would... Okay, they're just naturally going to stack up to the right, which is good. Very good. Okay, so now, uh, if I open this, if I told them to just flash this, what's going to happen is they're just going to... The AI is, as good as it is, it is still limited. What they're going to do is they're just going to throw a flash and it's going to get stuck in this corner and do nothing. So, what I'm going to do... Now that I know these guys are covering... I am going to have them breach uh, on me. I'm going to be the one to open it, and I am going to clear off of me. On my move, clear it. Doing it. Again, look at this. They stack up naturally with the shield in front, which is super cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to peek that door. Nobody is there. I'm going to try and get this through this gap. Oh, look at that. Perfect. I'm opening the door. Now they're clearing. I'm holding long. They're clearing. They're clearing. I got this guy here. Now, this is a, a, kind of a tricky situation because we got this lower atrium down here. I'm letting them do the most of the work because they're going to have a better chance of killing somebody through this shit than I am. So I'm letting them do most of the work. They're going to cuff that guy. They're going to secure his weapon. These guys, okay, so over there you can see this guy's covering the stairs and this AI is covering on something on this wall, so I'm going to assume there's a door there. He's covering that door. You got a, a civilian over there. I'm going to have them restrain. And I'm just maintaining security on what's going down below here. Again, I don't have to worry about people coming from behind me because all that is closed off and cleared. <laughs> now, in real-world scenarios, obviously somebody's always going to be maintaining uh, rear security, which is a good thing. And you know, but when you know nobody's coming from behind you, you don't have to do it in game and any big deal. So now we are going to advance here. So now I got this door here. I know that there's people in there because I can audibly hear them. So I'm going to wedge that door. And I'm going to cover this guy while he's doing it. And this guy's also covering. Now, look at this guy came he off them stairs. That AI guy is covering them stairs now. Super good. My God, is that good? Okay, that's wedged. I know there's guys in there, but I'm not worried about that yet because. Okay. Again, another, <laughs> another thing. I'm worried about training here rather than thinking. Never cross doors like that. Never stand in front of doors. You always want to come up on the side here. What I want to do, you know, you can cross the door if you do it quickly, but don't ever just stand in front of it, because that's going to happen. That exact thing right there. Like I said, I'm more worried about training than I am doing the right thing, so I'm trying to teach things, and here I am getting shot. So another very, <laughs> very good, uh, very good uh, lesson to be learned there. What I don't want to happen is I do not want to breach this, because I don't know how big this room is. It's probably going to take the whole team. But I don't want to get, you know, uh, blast on from behind. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cross this doorway. 
and enter and clear. I'm good to go. These guys will actually clear story uh, stairways for you. I'm gonna let them do most of the work again. Don't let them. Don't rely on your team to do all the work, but if they can do a majority of it, that's very good. They clear all the way. Now we're here. We have one dead suspect. Uh, again, we're opening up into a big room, so we're gonna, I'm gonna rely on my team to clear it because there's four of them and only one of me. Opening on the right. Opening on the left. They cleared all this. Let's clear over here, boss. Okay. Good here. Gotta pack it up. There's actually two guys dead down here. Good to go. Okay, so we got more audible cues of a civilian. What we suspect is a civilian. I don't see him up here, so he's obviously got to be downstairs. Move in and clear it. Yep, there's our guy right there. Now this is secure. That's the room. Uh, that's nothing over there. Now, while these guys are clearing uh, down there, I'm gonna tell you, talk to you a little bit more here. So this door's wedged. So I know I've been here, and I believe, because I know this is on the second floor, this is the room we cleared with all the computers in it. So that's good. I don't have to worry about that. So I'm going to do, I'm going to come down here with these guys, and I'm going to finish clearing the exterior, or the interior of the atrium. I got a guy here. I'm actually going to have one of my guys move down and restrain him. Fall in. I'm gonna have the rest of my guys fall in. Couple. Have somebody restrain him. Okay, I'm moving with your team. Always move with your team. Never go off on your own. Don't try and be a lone ranger kind of a guy because it ain't gonna work. Dog reporting. Roger, entry team. Great work. Keep going. Okay, so now everybody can fall back in on me. So now everything is cleared. I've cleared everything except for one last room. We're going to make our way back up to the third floor, which is the top floor. Move in, clear the room, provide support. Come on, follow on me. Again, if you have to cross doorways, you have to. It is what it is. I don't. Okay, I'm gonna have them stack up to the left. Up left side. Done. Shit. Lock. I'm gonna get up here without crossing that. Okay. Well, you can do it. You can only do what you can do. Ah. Okay. So we have a armed suspect straight from the door and that appears to be our main suspect i want him alive hopefully we have more suspects too uh so hopefully he is far enough away from this door i'm gonna try and do a little bit of shock and awe here we have three guys at least all armed inside of this it ain't looking good shotgun and a oh an ak okay we got automatic weapons and pump guns you're in my way sir let this guy get back on his position Okay, so we are going to breach with the C2 because if I open that door, they're going to start shooting automatically because they're watching it. So I'm going to need something. If it kills them, it is what it is. Chances are I'd rather have them die than my team. So I'm going to breach this with C2. And I'm going to clear it with a flashbang. I had them stack up on the left because the door is going to swing open that way. And uh, those threats are over here to the left side of the door. So, I'm, uh, you know, this is the best uh, setup for the least amount of damage that can be done to your team. So, I'm going to actually cue this, breach with C2, and clear with a flashback. I'm going to come back to this door. I'm going to remove this wedge. You're in my spot. Now we're going to execute. Ready. Look at this, too. This guy's maintaining rear security for this team. That's so awesome. Readying 
It's so good. Flash going in. Get in there, come on. Okay. All right, so one issue, uh, obviously when you clear a room with AI, they're going to go deep and they're going to clear like this and, you know, this all counts as one room, so they're going to clear this entire room. I wish they would just come in here and stop right here, but that's not the way it goes. So look at this. Hold on. I got to clear this last room with this guy. So this is red team. No, this, yeah, this is red team. I'm going to flash this. And I'm going to have them enter a room and clear. By the time they enter... Come on. Oh, that was a failure. Anyway. I should have waited for this setup. Anyway, you get the gist of that, what I'm saying. Okay, we're clear. Now we can take a look at what's going on in here. This entire complex is clear. Uh, the... Oh, suspect's PC. Alright. So we have evidence to report. <laughs> Look at this. This is so awesome, dude. I love this. This mission's so good. I played it probably the most out of any of them. Just because I feel like it's... It's one of the coolest missions they got. Uh, it's amazing. So this is old Melky Toes. Let's go uh, make sure we got him secured. So now you're going to get a better score. Because one, you relied on your teammates. Okay, so this is a problem. Well, not really a problem. I wish they would have cuffed this guy up. Gonna get you out of here. But this is his brother. What did he do now? And we got the main suspect. Copy entry team. Notifying trailers. I'm gonna start uh begging this evidence. So before I get too far, before I start begging everything, I'm gonna go over what just happened. So if he was straight up in front of that door, again. If he's in front of that door and he's watching, if you just open that and you try and breach it, he's going to kill one of your guys or he's going to get shot. But, since I used the C2 and he was way back here, and I hit him with a flash grenade, they all gave up. Most of them. Except for this guy. You know, he was a true, uh, he was a true friend. He died for this guy. And, uh, this guy's got cat ears on his fucking headphones, so he ain't worth dying for. Anyway... Now we can go through and start securing. I'm not actually going to secure everything. I'm going to let it sit for a minute because there's something else I'm going to want to explain. After we go through and, ma and make sure I have secured everything I can for evidence-wise. How did that... Where did this TV come from? No, it's not TV. It's a door. I'm an idiot. Okay. Okay. It looked like a TV because of the back. It looked like a screen. But anyway. Before I finish this, I'm just going to make sure, like I said, that uh, there's no uh, secondary evidence that I can... Interesting. I've never noticed that that, uh, where we took his mom, where we... Uh, secured his mom. That's that vent that leads to the other room. I never realized that. Okay, so we're good. So now I know if you open up your little ATAX, everything's good. Uh, if everything's good and the mission's still not complete and you have a soft complete, that means there's still evidence to be secured. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come out into the biggest room. And I click my, uh, my squad menu and six is search and secure. Secure the area. On it. Anything that they've missed, anything at all in this local area, they're going to bag up, which is super awesome if you're looking for one random thing. I'm just going to end the mission. We're going to check out our score. Uh, the only thing we got is one in we got two injured guys. No deaths. And we took the main suspect and his brother and his mom alive. Uh, I think that's pretty impressive. Pretty close to probably an S. Friendly fire. So one of our own guys shot one of our own guys. Anyway, that's an A. Not bad. You probably could do it better than me. 
But anyway, that was me showing you what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. And that is how you control an AI team to set yourself up for success. Uh, I know it's kind of repetitive. I probably won't do one just like this, but I am going to do playthroughs of every mission, hopefully. So thank you for watching, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.